Hello, I'm David Brown. I'm the chair of the INS College of Fellows and of the History Committee of INS, where we're going to be interviewing many of the original pioneers in the AI field. Today, the inter our interviewee is Professor Shunichi Amari. Professor Amari majored in mathematical engineering at the Graduate School of the University of Tokyo in 1963. He has been interested in many aspects of mathematical engineering, including two major fields. One is mathematical neuroscience or theory of neural networks. He proposed the stochastic gradient learning method in 1967 and did sim simulations of pattern recognition using a simple five-layer neural network in 1968. He then proposed statistical neurodynamics, that is the dynamics of neural systems, including neural oscillators. In the 1970s, he devoted himself to establishing mathematical neural science, consisting of an associative memory model, dynamics of neural fields, self-organizing neural nets and fields. This work was rediscovered by Jay Hopfield, Jay Cowan, the PDP group, and others. The other field is, is information geometry, which originated from the study of the differential geometry of a family of probability distributions. This field has grown and an international journal, journal information geometry, is now published by Springer. Amari analyzed deep learning by using information geometry and proposed the natural gradient learning method. He has obtained many awards, just as the IEEE Neural Networks Pioneer Award, INS Gabor Award, the Order of Cultural Merit, and so on. He has served as a president of INNS and as director of the Riken Brain Science Institute. Well, Professor Amore, I'm very uh, impressed by your credentials. Perhaps you could tell us something about how you got into the field. Okay, so as, I, as you mentioned, I major in mathematical engineering. That is to apply modern mathematical methods to various engineering problems, including some new phenomena. So when I was graduate student, I did research on networks or information or even material sciences. But what I had in mind is the brain. Why the brain works so well? It's very mysterious. So I wanted to analyze something on the brain because I studied textbook of the physiology on the brain, very difficult and nothing can be elucidated, just mysterious. So at that time, perceptron proposed by Rosenblatt was something fashionable. It looks very promising, but no deep theory. So I wanted to analyze the, the brain or neural networks by mathematical method. This is the, my starting point on neural networks. Yes, I believe you have been the, the premier theoretician in, in the field. Do you believe are your most significant accomplishments? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, in the, as mentioned in the inter introduction, maybe there are two fields, that is neural networks or mathematical neuroscience, and the other is information geometry. I first mentioned the neural networks. I started, why? Rosenblatt, the past person, is not so successful. This is because 
there is no way to train hidden layers neurons. So I think if we use analog neurons, everything resolves. So I propose stochastic gradient descent learning method to be applicable to the neural networks having many layers. And as a trial, I did computer simulation in 1968. I used very simple five layers in neural networks, and it was successful to my surprise. However, in the 70s or in the late 60s, it was a dark period of neural network study in America and Europe. Fortunately, Japan was isolated. Okay, so we did say <laughs> Fukushima, Kunihiko Fukushima, and I did those things. Um, but in US, not many researchers joined this, this point. And as a natural consequence, my paper was forgotten. And so in the 70s, I devoted myself for these 10 years to the analysis of the neural networks. It includes statistical neural neurodynamics. It's analysis of randomly connected neural networks and also associative memory model that is exactly the same as John Hopfield proposed later. And like neural field theory, self-organizing neural networks, and those things, I did devoted myself for 10 years. Hmm. And this is the neural network, and the other one is information geometry, and I think the, the, for information science, geometrical perspectives are very important. And I think differential geometry of the manifold of probability distribution. And in connection with neural networks, I propose natural gradient learning method that is a Riemannian method. And now it is applicable to deep, deep neural networks. So this is maybe my major things. Ah. I'm afraid that I spoke too much. No, no. You speak in a very interesting things. At, at the present time, uh, do you continue to have interests in the field? What yes. are you working on? Uh, okay, so uh, I retired a few years ago, but still I have interest in those the neural networks and the information geometry. So I'm doing my research as my hobby. I have two hobbies. One is playing go game. Computer, <laughs> computers much stronger, I know. But <laughs> still, it's interesting to play yes. with the humans. Yes. And the other is the research, and I have been interested in those the um, statistical neurodynamics of deep learning. Hmm. Because I started the statistical neurodynamics that is randomly connected neural networks. Changing, changing uh, the subject here. Okay. What, what do you remember about the early days of, uh, of, of, of INNS, of the society of JNNS? Okay, so it, uh, yeah, it's very interesting. In 1980s, there appeared those the connectionist people and they say to understand human intelligence, analysis of neural networks very important. There were a lot of enthusiasm at that time. 
And so Japan, because of we were isolated, but in the 70s, we did lots of works. In that sense, we are advanced. And the middle 80, there is an international conference on neural networks, ICNN, held in San Diego. And the Hecht Nielsen called me on phone. And he invited me to join that meeting. It's a big meeting. And INN started the end of the, that meeting. Some researchers from Japan, America, Europe, and Korea joined together, including Chinese. And INN started. But there were problems. One problem is such a meet, meeting is so enthusiastic. That implies very profitable. Okay, 200,000 US dollars they oh. earned from one meeting. Okay, this is one of the big mistakes. Okay, and uh, there are two things I'd like to say. One thing is INNS started, that's good, but I triply still wanted to keep their hegemony. So we have two meetings. That is a big problem for those researchers. And because the one meeting was so profitable, okay, uh, to INSS, a management company joined in. They proposed, they managed everything. They requested $200,000 per year. Okay, so it, it's a too, too huge. Within a few years, INNS became in a crisis. There is some battle against the management, management company, and now it's okay, everything looks okay, but the profitable is a bad thing, okay? Ah. And another bad thing is there is a separation of IEEE meeting and INLS meeting. That's so bad for research. So when I was the president of INNS, I proposed to integrate, join ITP with one joint conference. That is the start of IJCNN. Ah. Okay. And ITP people are so bureaucratic. <laughs> I, I, I felt and a lot of discussion, but still we want to keep unification with them, okay? Good. Now, what about the, if we're looking into the, the future, do you have any ideas about the role of a professional society like INNS in the future? Mm -hmm. Yes, so maybe for the INNS, it's important thing is we have based on the real brain, okay? But not its imitation. So AI is within our scope. Now it is very important to integrate AI and the brain theory. Huh. Okay? And the, this is what we can do, but many others cannot do. But we should pursue these things, uh, and we can do that. Mm. So, do you have advice for the field? Do you have a, a, a opinions about what people are doing right or doing wrong in, in artificial intelligence? Yeah, 
uh, maybe nothing wrong. The, uh, the present AI deep learning got so great success. However, I feel that the practical success going ahead. However, but the, still the theory, why it works so well, has far behind. Recently, there are coming some theoretical results, but still unsuccessful. Okay. So my thing is we need multiple theories, mm. multiple deep theory to found AI and which should be common, the brain theory. Okay. So still, I, I'd like to say the integration of the brain and AI is future we, we should do. I would like to ask you, what advice would you give for a researcher just starting out in the field? Okay, so I'd like to, especially to young researcher, work on your own ideas. Believe yourself. It's not good to blindly follow others' idea. Of course, there are a lot of good ideas and fashionable in the field. It's okay to study them, but still, you should search for your own idea, and it is very important to stick on that. Mm. That is my idea. Yes. Okay. okay. Is there anything else which you would like to uh, share with us? No, I'm, I have retired, but still keeping interest in this field and development of INNS. Wow. Thank you for your active operation. Well, Professor Amari, thank you very, very much for sharing the, your views with us. And I'm very impressed with all that you have accomplished and you're looking well. So I hope you have many more years ahead of you. Okay. So thank you thank very you. much.